Appreciate you, man. And uh, we have uh, one other person that's going to be getting on. But while we wait on Latoya to get on, it's a good chance for me to thank you, man, for taking time out on short notice <laughs> and uh, jumping on here with uh, with me about Cleveland, man. I want to really highlight you and what you do. And, uh, of course, the topic is about uh, stopping this, this killing out here in, in our inner cities. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you perfectly. So, yeah, while we wait uh, on her to get on, man, or... tell me, who are you, man? Okay. okay. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Antonio McMullen, you know. Uh, I'm born and raised here, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, you know what I'm saying? Definitely a witness to a lot of my brothers being killed, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, you know what I'm saying, right by me, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, been in a juvenile a lot, but um, I was able by myself individually to fight through the um, the recidivating the recidivating chain. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just I'm just here to be a lesson, like literally every single thing a person could think you went through, I went through it ten times worse. I was by myself, young, getting going through child abuse, going through a lot of stuff, man. Any, I was going you 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 mad. look like you you look like you 19 years old. How old are you? Yeah, so you saying you've been through a lot down at an early age, huh? Yeah, I mean, I didn't been through a lot. I just, um, two years ago, two years ago, um, August 2018, I just came home from doing, like, about 12 months. I got sent out to a, uh, a facility out there where it was a bunch of kids, uh, I mean, not kids, but, you know, other people from from I think the age fourteen to twenty five, all in one place. You know what I'm saying? So we was out there. Uh, and you just you know what I'm saying? You experienced a lot. You know what I'm saying you got to meet people, and and it was only two. It was only two people from Cleveland there. So you know, I I, I, I got into my book. You know what I'm saying? I started learning through my books. I started to understand who I was and understand what was my work and my mission here individually. And I'm going to keep saying individually because one thing people did that I had to learn really late is that you're going to be by yourself. You're going to go through pain. You're going to see stuff. But uh, it's a lot of stuff that I had that changed me because I was doing it by myself. I had nothing to fall back on. I had nobody to fall back on. Outside, trying to find the next meal. It was always, you know what I'm saying, for a long time, for years, over over six to nine years, it was just always tragic stuff happening. Like I could never feel like I could get up to the top. But you know what I'm saying? I kept faith. Here I am now. You know what I'm saying? Let's. Now, now, are you the only child, or you grew up like you say? Uh, you got siblings who like what's the makeup? No, I, got, uh, uh, I, got, I got half siblings, but my I, uh, my parents went through a custody battle, and my sisters, my two sisters live with my mother in Texas, and you know what I'm saying? So they've been gone for years, you know what I'm saying? So they grew up somewhere else. So I live with my dad. So so as far as that, I only have a big that if we meet, be around me, so. Well, you, you, here's what I would say, man. Your testimony is going to help a lot of people. Um, so, like, do you feel like what you went through prepared you for where you at right now? Most definitely, because it comes um, for, like, I always and the together family bondage. I always wanted that. So being old now and un- By your understanding, as you work yourself, it's better me than it's better me because, like, how I am now, it's like I can understand it's more understanding. It's like if if I had all the family stuff and everything was together and everything, 
at this point now, I will be lost by myself. But I had the time to love myself and get myself together. So when it comes time to me knowing that my my grandmother had all sons, two of her sons, I mean, one of her sons was in prison my whole his, my, my my whole birth, and the other one, you know what I'm saying, it was in other stuff. I was I, I was I wasn't close to none of my uncles. So you know how we grew up grew up with men. So you know I, I ain't get no nurturing, no affection, none of that. My dad. So, okay. So, what, what, what we got Latoya on. Latoya, um, thank you for taking time out. I know um, 18 years ago you gave birth on. on today. So we appreciate you taking a moment out. <laughs> uh, no problem, Mr. Brown. So uh, this is Antonio. He was just giving me the backstory about who he is. Uh, Latoya, you mind introducing yourself and telling them what you do as well since y'all both in Cleveland? Okay. Uh, well, how you doing, Antonio? I'm well. I'm T. I own BWE Entertainment as well as Black Women of Excellence. Uh, my children are the co-founders of BWE Future Kids, which is a nonprofit here. So I do a lot of things. <laughs> um, I promote, market, and manage artists. I produce shows, create shows and galas. I help entrepreneurs uh, within setting up their own business. So my organization is basically a part since 20 and you know my kids grew up on uh doing events. Now Latoya, your phone going out. I didn't hear that last part. Okay. Is the connection okay? Yeah, I can hear you good yeah, right now. You. Okay. Uh, I said my children, they're the co-founders of Future Kids, which is a nonprofit that focuses in on youth and community. So they create um, little events and stuff like that to help benefit our children. Our current project right now is a uh, virtual ED, which is uh, an avatar that I created to help children like, you know, get to throughout the school year. So I do a lot of stuff. Now, now, Antonio, did you know Latoya and BWE before this call? No. Okay. Well, you mind telling her what you do, man? Uh, and like, uh, how, we met because of I saw you in the news. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm an artist, uh, music artist. Um, pretty much self-employed. Help out when I can. Uh, I'm in a lot of organi I'm in a lot of organizations as well. Uh, some through my church, but right now the main one I'm focused on is called uh, Black. Where um, you know, saying where it's practically like I'm just trying to bring in as many kids, change their mind as I can. So uh, Black stands for Building Leadership, Academic Services. So uh, what we do is you know what I'm saying we uh we're um with the YMCA. And uh, we just, you know, we help kids out. We got a tutor, or something. Uh, uh, we talk about ourselves, you know what I'm saying? We talk about our faith, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just express ourselves, you know what I'm saying? It's the safe haven where you can express yourself with no judgment. So, that's pretty yeah. much what I do. Okay. Uh, so, what type, what type of genre? Sorry to cut you off, Mr. Sai. What uh, genre of music do you do? Are you a uh, rap artist, an R&B? Yeah, yeah, both of them too. Like uh, okay. I make, I make, I'm more so like, uh, like I express myself to so whatever the vibe is, but but it will fall in them too, mostly like. Okay. Very. So Latoya, do you see any synergy there? Can uh, can y'all work together? Oh, uh, most definitely. <laughs> and and y'all both know, uh, so Antonio. Me and Latoya been rocking and rolling for at least six or seven months. This summer, she was going to come with her group to Chicago and in Gary, Indiana, to just put on and show our people they talent. Uh, and, and now that we met you, it's the same thing. You've been to Shot Town before? I mean, uh, with my travel job, I've been to uh, Chicago before, but not like, no, uh, like I ain't never been in it. You know what I'm <laughs> well, well, yeah, we, um, uh, we, cause, cause here's what I believe, with the shooting and killing and the violence, it's a lot to it. 
but in order to really help people change, changing their environment and scenery can do more than anything we say is what they get to experience. And that's what changed me was the Navy let me travel around the world. So I, I like this call has already been successful where you and Latoya in Cleveland meeting each other. So we can hang up right now and it's going to rock and roll from here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited that now Latoya got to hear you. I know she has to go because uh, she's celebrating her daughter's 18th birthday, but I'm glad that y'all had a chance to connect spirits. Oh, please, uh, sign this pass uh, down my information to Mr. Antonio, and we can, you know, we can definitely collab. I host networking meetings every first Saturday of the month. So mm -hmm. um, my uh, Facebook name is Latoria T. Witcher and shit, like my, the fire picture that you see on the screen, that's my uh, profile picture. So that, so you'll know to me, to me. Monday, like I said, I am celebrating. My birthday was Monday and my daughter's was yesterday. So we're like, kind of like celebrating over the weekend, but um, I'll be back to work on Monday. And then, you know, I can send you over like the brochures and stuff like that of, of our organization and what we do. And hopefully we, I can get you to come out to a networking meeting in September. Looking forward to it, definitely. Now, now okay, so before you go, Latoya, can you tell us? Because I did tell people we were going to be on here. What is it? Any hope for Cleveland to stop the violence? And what what is the top three things that can really make uh, Cleveland safer? I mean, better law enforcement. Uh, our communities coming together. That's most important. So we can all have an understanding. And I mean, just our politicians, you know, working with us and not against us as far as changing policies here in Cleveland and trying to make things safer. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, Queen, well, uh, tell your daughter happy birthday again. And um, we'll you. catch you next time. All right, please pass my information down, Mr. Smith, to Mr. Antonio. I look forward to networking with you, sir. Same to you, ma'am. Happy birthday. All right. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, man, so now now let me read this to you, uh, Antonio, and you tell me uh, if you know of these places. Edgewater, that's the neighborhood. Yeah. You know about that? Yeah. That's black. It's like, uh, it's um that's on the west side, so it's more so Hispanic. But that's a um Edgewater is a place where everybody meet up at party. You know what I'm saying? Everybody from all over Cleveland. So that's a big big party spot in Cleveland. What about Asia Town? Never heard of it. Forest Hills. Yeah, that's um yeah about to say that. That's like that's like um I like I I, I heard of that place like but it's. Like, I don't really, you know what I'm saying? I don't really hear a lot about it as far as that, like. It's like black? Really Is it mostly it. black? Mm, I mean, yeah, it's that in, uh, we got a little bit of Indian, a little bit of Indian. What about Brooklyn? You heard of Brooklyn? Ohio? Uh, it's a neighborhood called Brooklyn? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. That's, uh, yeah, that's white. That's white. Tremont, yeah. Tremont. Is is it on I'm the west familiar. side? Okay. What I'm about D what about Detroit Detroit Shoreway? Uh that's a, it's on the west side though. Detroit is on the west side, but I don't, I don't know nothing about it. Um uh, Buckeye Road, Buck Buckeye Road, is that a neighborhood? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I used to live over there. It, it it's cool, kind of crazy over there. But you know, I, I really don't. I don't. I can't. I can't give you a full aspect on the ethnicity over there because it's really, it's really urban. It's really urban out there, so it's it's kind of like really, really mixed. Okay, what about Industrial Valley? You heard of them? Nah. Um, stockyards. Stockyards. Nah. Union Miles. Oh, Union and Miles. That's uh, those two different streets. Yeah. It be. I mean. No. I mean. 
Union and Mall. That's like I, I I used to be up there a lot, but I I I, I, I kind of feel comfortable walking over there. You know what I'm saying? I be walking. I used to be walking up the street, up to the store all the time. I ain't never get questioned or stared at weird. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I feel like it's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? But then again, it's all about the time and day. It's all about the time and day. It's all about body language. It's a lot. It's, a, it's about a lot of stuff. People will say stuff about when they go inside an area, but don't say their body language. They don't say how they staring at people. How they, you know, what I'm saying how they get smart if somebody ask them a question. They don't say none of that. They just be saying, you know, what I'm saying they just say, oh yeah, what well, is happening? Like it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a thousand ways to keep yourself safe. And one of them is, you know, what I'm saying being mindly that you're not in your own area. So. But yeah, you in the miles for me, I'd say that was it's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? You could pretty much walk walk a little country. Is it mostly black or is it white? Uh, black, black. Yeah. All all up that way. But what about that old Brooklyn? Is old Brooklyn different than regular Brooklyn? Yeah. Uh old Brooklyn is worse. It's just still fully white though, but just just worse. Like uh it's just a lot of like way more mess heads out there. What about uh, Central? You heard of Central? Central? No. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's by 55th. Yeah, by St. Clair. I'm familiar with it, but I don't, re- I don't really hear nothing really around it. Uh, what about uh, Union University Circle? No, that's not a uh, University Circle. That's that's just downtown. That ain't really nothing. That's just downtown. That's uh. What about Fairfield? You heard of them? Fairview. Yeah, Fairfield. Uh, yeah. No. Only heard of them. Only heard of them. But the facility, I never heard of Fairview. There's a lot of places that you really don't hear about in Cleveland. I got four more, man. Glenview, Glenville. Yeah. Glenville. Yeah, I, I grew up in that area. I grew up in the Glenville area. Is that black? Yes. Is, and what about uh Woodland Hills? Yeah, Woodland Hills, that's also black. Is it bad, good? Um Woodland Hills, I say it's it's cool. And it's Lee Miles. You heard of Lee Miles? Yeah, that's like the same thing as Union and Miles, you know what I'm saying? Like that's where all the food at, the bank, the uh the stores. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. So, uh, like I say, the worst thing about all of them areas is the environment, the people in it. You know what I'm saying? So anything could happen based off of your reaction, your body language, you know what I'm saying? All of those. I'm saying, that's why I said all of those would be in the middle. I'm not saying nothing could happen because it's, it's, it's hot people everywhere. It's hot boys everywhere. It's hard-headed people everywhere, but they want something to react off of. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to be safe in all those areas. You know what I'm saying stuff happening on the low and all them areas, but you 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 you, gotta, you you wise man for twenty man. I like that. When uh, you a Capricorn? When what, what sign are you? A Taurus. Okay, all right, cool. So, what do you think? Uh, you heard about Chicago? Uh, your perception, of good, bad. What's your perception of Chicago? Sh- I think it's aggressive. I say yeah. that. I, yeah, I think it's aggressive. It's aggressive? Very aggressive, like yeah, it's a very aggressive city as far as demeanor, as far as attitude. Um, when I think of Chi Town, you know, uh, kind of yeah, I would say aggressive. You know, man. Besides the murder rate, though, it's the people in general, conversation, how they talk to each other. How, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very aggressive. So. Um. So, what do you think? If you like, I asked Latoya, what's the top three reasons for the violence in Cleveland? Um, envy is the number one. Envy. Add that as to put a star on that. Feel me? Envy. Because there's a lot of dudes that be hating on it. Number two is um idle look up to, you know what I'm saying? OG's the OG, you know what I'm saying? Like uh a lot of these dudes be having so much advantage that they like the power of just the temporary, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, say one dude that has the power over five, five dudes, and them five dudes want to be in the same position as that top dude. But instead of that top dude showing them how to do it in a positive way, he'll make them do all of this crazy stuff just because it's not him. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's like the look of the idol, the OG, you know what I'm saying, the big bro. That, that's the second reason for the Bible. And then the third reason is impulsivity. Impulsivity. Acting without thinking. The main, that's the, you know what I'm saying? One in three. Very odd. It's two odd numbers, but it's very odd. And impulsivity is the main thing that's killing Cleveland right now. These dudes not thinking. You know what I'm saying? A dude to catch a body and then go turn himself in. The whole time he could have just punched a dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't think until after. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember a judge telling me when I was trying to come home. I was trying to come home, but I got in trouble with God there. I mean, I, I, mean, I, had, a, I, had, a little, I had a little anger about it. And the judge told me. I, I was like, I want to go home for Christmas. I want to be with my parents. You know what I'm saying? I want to be with my dad. I'm a change. So, this is my third time in there. Third time in there. And I always, always, you know what I'm saying, getting in trouble. And she told me the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. She told me to leave. I had to go right back down in there. And it's like, that's one thing that I'm noticing. You notice one thing. Everybody want to be a rapper, but nobody wants to take the time to study the craft. They want to get some money. And, and make and get up the, the best image, people whoever raw, and then take them out. And then once they get famous, they deal with all these cases that they did to get all the way up there, all these dumb stuff they did just to get that image. Now they level down. You know what I'm saying? So now, what what role do government play? What do you see from the mayor, the state, the 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 federal government? What's funny is that my mom used to date. My mom used to date Mayor Frank Jackson in, in high school. She used to say he was a goofball, like a like a really goofy person. So it's like when it comes to that, it's like I I, I don't see very much. You know what I'm saying? I got I got you know what I'm saying? I got oh, I I have to understand as far as more with that. But it's just like if you're gonna you're gonna be a mayor, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna look over stuff, and if you're in charge. You gotta make sure that how 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 you're enforcing yourself, how you're trying to get people to understand you. you got to do it in a way people are going to understand. Posting something on, on uh, social media or smacking something on the TV is not going to work. you got to make these people, get these people attention, and you got to help them understand the reason. Tell them understand why stuff is happening. Tell them why we need to stop all this violence in Cleveland. Tell them why. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about, they just say, well, all of this stuff can happen if we continue. But don't, but don't say nothing about this can lead to this. You know what I'm saying? Breaking it down to them. Everybody's not thinking like that. It's, it's a lot of people in Cleveland right now who's living, who's living, I mean, who's existing instead of living. There's a lot of people in Cleveland right now who exist instead of living. So if you, you got to teach people how to live. You a governor, you a mayor, teach people how to live. What, what, so, what, what, about, what about the churches? What role do the churches play in Cleveland? Um, I feel like that, you know what I'm saying, churches churches will play like a hmm, that's crazy because it's like I, I would feel like that it's just a community thing. I feel like churches are just community based based. Like um like if you put a church if you put one church in the middle of a county Instead of putting five churches, you know what I'm saying? Instead of putting five churches in one little city, like in Euclid, they got probably like three, three churches. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a couple churches. You put one church in, every, you know what I'm saying? Everybody in that city would know each other better. Everybody in that city would. I feel like that when it comes to that, they just branch them out in places to fund them. I feel like church, churches is just a funding place because when I, like if I go to a church and I sit there and just, and stuff like that. It be I can see people in aisles who completely don't like attach their life to come attach their life to God. Like me, I believe in the spiritual mind and in and, and besides the Almighty and the faith in him, I believe in the mind love. You feel me? Like I believe in making sure my head is strong. You know what I'm saying? I I, I make sure every every time I'm doing something, everything I'm doing it's to persevere, you know what I'm saying? It's to stay determined and it's to not procrastinate. So I feel like these churches ain't bringing in the faith base in the body. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about in the body. Like, I understand we stand up, you know what I'm saying? We do all of this for him. But teach me how to bring that inside with my faith and understand the value of it so I can love myself. That's why people give up so fast. You got to teach them so different. Teach them, you know what I'm saying? Conversate them with them so much that it's like they just grabbed a feather out the air and it was right there with the notes of life on You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what what would you say about the um are is is the black businesses or uh, are they doing things to help out with the violence in Cleveland? They trying. They trying. Like what? But, uh they need to uh they trying to just you know what I'm saying? They trying to just be noted. They trying to branch out and come together with different stuff. You know what I'm saying? They trying to just show that it's more to it than just money. You know what I'm saying? It's about it's about wealth. You know what I'm saying? It's about the color of our skin. When they look at the color of our skin, how can they see the value in us? You know what I'm saying? Like, a person can look at a white person and automatically think, like, oh, they probably got money. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they probably rich. But I want, I want somebody to be able to look at, uh, you know what I'm saying, African-American, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you look very wealthy. You look very rich. Your, your, your ancestors were great. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when it comes to that, when it comes to this type of stuff, and I think about, all of these black businesses, I feel like that they're trying the hardest that they can. But one thing that we need to do, like they do with all these other businesses, for uh, for lashes and for shoes and for job fairs and stuff like that, what they need to do is they need to make a fair for all of these black businesses. All of these places that they can go to, all these places that they can do everything, they should have these black businesses making these big, 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 big fairs. Like, come on now, they deserve us, you know what I'm saying? Every city should have a fair. I understand Black History Month, but at least Black History Month, let's bring all the black businesses in one big black business fair. Everybody, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's bring it all together. Let's see in Cleveland, Ohio, every black business that we got. I guarantee you most of the people who are going to come there are not even going to notice 90% of the stories is even in their city. We got to make um, it stand out. They try it. They try to stand um, can you see the screen here? Yeah. So, um, do you know any uh, tradesmen like carpenters, bricklayers, plumbers, any of those type people? Uh, I'm trying to think. Do I know? No. I'm about to say, I knew some people who did carpentry and job court when I was in job court, but they did not complete. Really? What about uh, Team Seven Gardeners? You know any gardeners in Cleveland? Gardeners? Nah. It's like they all kind of grew up. Like I, I know a lot of people that used to do a lot of that stuff, like for years, like just trying to make money and just got stuck to it. But you know what I'm saying? They grew up. And they, and like you know, they, uh. Well, they call, they said some urban neighborhoods are food deserts. Like, it's not a lot of grocery stores. Does Cleveland, is Cleveland considered a food desert? Um, no, I wouldn't say. I feel like that. I feel like we have a lot of accessible stuff in here. But I feel like that they just, I feel like that the, I'm not even going to say the, the governor of Cleveland in general. I just feel like our government needs to stop pushing welfare so hard. Like, he needs, it needs to be a benefit of a benefit. It needs to be actually benefited. Like, I mean, benefit things. Like, it needs to, like, I feel like that they got whole stores where you can cash out with your government money, like, like it, and it's just embracing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we would have more, like, you know, Texas. Texas got Walmart. They got Walmart supermarkets. They got ATVs. They got their own brand of grocery stores. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, because they don't embrace they embrace their people. You know what I'm saying? Like, they embrace their whole people. Like, they lift up, they uplift them people. When I was walking there, everybody got sidewalks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I barely seen a hobo. You know what I'm saying? You might see a hobo by the freeway or something like that, but, you know what I'm saying? You won't see them like it's just something that's just cool. Like, like a dude, like a person will grow up, live, graduate, get a diploma, and as soon as they have a baby, they just immediately jump to welfare because it's the easiest thing to go to. So it's just like, I feel like that what they need to do 
It's take down, stop embracing this EBT, stop embracing this Ohio direction. If it's a benefit because somebody's struggling, okay, let them know we got you. We're going to assist you. But don't make, you know what I'm saying? Don't try to make it look like it's a lane and a line that is accessible to anybody. All they got to do is just be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, let's just, let now, the special people be special. Now, do you know, do you know any, uh, like Cleveland Team 8, do you know any black law firms or black judges? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I don't know black law firms, but I do know a black judge because the same judge that told me that she went to um, she went to work for the uh for the uh the adults, so that would count, right? Yeah, and her name was I don't even know. I, I just it was Magist. It was Judge. It's Judge McCall now. Okay, that was her name. Yeah. What. What about black military veterans? Do you see any former Army, Air Force, Navy guys in Cleveland? Um, I actually saw one today. I was helping my dad move some stuff for one of his coworkers, and her son was in the military. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the last question, yeah. man, kindergarten through 12th graders, how are they doing in Cleveland? Are they afraid of getting killed and shot? You said kindergarten through twelfth graders. Yeah, K through twelve. It's not. It's not the same. Now, one thing I'm gonna say is this ain't the same kindergarten through twelve five years ago. So, it's not that afraid of getting shot, but it's how fast they're moving. How ready are they? And they're too ready. They're too prepared. I don't think they're afraid. I think that they're ready and prepared. I think that they're ready for the lane that that's going to happen. I, I feel like that they immediately, I feel like at, at, at six, because I seen this little boy that was like eight years old, and he was already, he, he said he was gay. You know what I'm saying? He, he, already, he was already concerned with it. He was already, you know what I'm saying? He already knew what he was. You know what I'm saying? And I seen another dude. He was sick. Smoky. Smoky. These, these dudes is way different. It's not. It's not about that. It's what they set their mind on. And I, it was so crazy. And the theory that I've been thinking for the last six months is, when did it become a bad thing to have a thousand things as a kid that you wanted to be? I don't see that no more. I don't see it. I don't see, I even see my little brother. I got a little brother. I don't even see him saying he want to be in the Army, uh, this, 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 this. He don't say none of that. He just live life as it is. Every day, get up. And you know what I'm saying? Sometimes he might be mad. Sometimes he might be happy. But that's fact. I don't hear no goals in his head. I don't hear no future imagination. Of him. All that is gone. All that is out the window. That's what I don't hear no more. Innocence. You know what I'm saying? The the wanting to see and reveal the true life. It's like these kids be prepared for a bad life already because somebody made them mad or something. You know what I'm saying? Or they see their people doing it and, it, and the lane is easy. It's just like the wrong way is just no right now. Uh, well, is it any hope? Antonio, based on what you're saying, should we give up and say F it? Definitely. <laughs> it's always. No, no. No, 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 no. It ain't that. <laughs> it's never that. It's the influence. When you change the influence, when you let them know that life is worth it, when you let them know that five years from now, you ain't, you ain't even going to remember who you're hanging out with, when you, let, when you can show them that being by yourself, when you can tell them a story, how you was by yourself, because it talks to you and how you by yourself, people. Everybody knows you just cool, you know what I'm saying? Which you don't have to worry about nobody doing this to you. And they going to understand that it's okay to be by yourself in the You don't have to no, the people no click, feel like you cool. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do understand that your faith is in what comes. So I got full I got full hope. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna change because I'm gonna change it. You feel me? Like it ain't it, 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 it can't be the same. I got a little brother out here, my dad. I got my dad, he is journalist himself. It, it won't be like that at all. I couldn't I couldn't let it be like that at all. It's too what much hope. Is your brother in? He um I think he's in third third or fourth. 
All right, look on the screen, man. You see what third graders is? Third graders, yeah. So that's who we so want to have in your brother's life this year, man. Wait, so which one? The, uh, the, uh, you talking about the uh, Carpenters? Yeah, definitely. All of them. They go take turns. <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that because he ain't doing nothing but like literally just getting up in his system, man. Like I, I can show you pictures where he used to play baseball. It's like the older he get, I can just see him just being okay, just turning into. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna let it happen. Intellectually, he gonna hear me every day. You know what I'm saying? Physically, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be with him every day. I'm gonna let him know like it ain't it ain't never been that. I didn't get everything in the world, and everybody and everybody look. You know what I'm saying everybody look up to me with how I am now. You feel me? It ain't. I have no beef with nobody. I don't have no people that I'm bad with. I don't, everybody has respect. You know what I'm saying? And respect was earned. I ain't, I ain't saying like I've always been a guy to be like, I've I never been like, um, you know, like, like that. I was always very by myself, like very by myself. But mentally, I was always by myself. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's trials and tribulations. And I didn't been through a lot, like. I didn't hurt. I didn't hurt a lot of people tell me like, like I'm the like very very like constantly. You always tell me that they surprised how a person that went through all of that who was there with me, even like like I don't understand how you turned out to be this. So, I, well, I tell you that, what, you know? man, I am impressed by you, man. I'm impressed with your uh, perseverance, and I can't wait for you to meet the network that we have nationwide. Because I do think it's going to take a national effort in order for us to help people think broader and be more of a uh, global or national um, perspective than just local. So, man, uh, any questions for me? Um, uh, what, um, yeah, but let's say that, uh, that post that you've seen, I'm trying to get my Facebook back. I don't know, I don't know what happened. But the Facebook that I have where I have all my music on, I, try, I just try to sign in, and it's like it just keeps it been saying error for the last couple of days. So I'm hoping I get that back so I can continue with my, you know what I'm saying, the people that's watching my page. But if not, then the, uh, the page that, I mean, the picture, I'm saying the Instagram that you text, I mean, the Facebook that you text me off of will be the one that I'll be using, and I'll have to update it with all my stuff because I don't even look like that in that picture. I, look, I was like. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. So uh, we'll we'll shoot for 2021, man. Getting you uh you guys out to Chicago and Gary, Indiana, uh to tour with our people, man. And uh we just rock and roll. Well, definitely, man. I'm definitely about to be looking forward to it. You know what I'm saying? What? And tell your father what we're doing, man. I'm gonna send you the website so you can check out our Cleveland page on the website. Okay. Okay. All right, my brother, man. Be safe out there in the streets. Yes, sir. Thank you. All space for you. All right.